There we go! Oh, 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 oh. Fourth Master's Vlog in Gameplay! Hello everyone and welcome to Fourth Master's Vlog for the Warm of the Files and Gaming System created by Games Workshop based in the UK. And welcome to the second game review of this vlog. Today I'm reviewing the game Dawn of War 3, the beta version. That should be noted, I will mostly talk about the limited experience I had during the beta phase, focusing on the art style and the gameplay and not so much of the story. If I decide to get the full game, I will talk more thoroughly on the game in another separate video. See, ever since I wrote this review, there has been a little change. I have seen a little bit of videos from the game and other pe people playing it, so I know a little bit more about the, the story-wise than I did before. Unfortunately, I would say that the game looks a very cut and paste, typical story-wise story structure. It is the same as the previous games. You have orcs attacking a world. You find out that in fact the orcs are attacking because the Eldars or the Chaos have tricked them into attacking and then the Eldar is there to stop them and they fight each other and it ends with them trying to destroy a Chaos God or a Chaos Demon or whatever. So it's it's a very same o same o same o But anyway. So what I can say about this game is that there are three available races to begin with and if that will be expanded upon in the future I do not know at the moment. The primary one is the Blood Ravens Space Marines and, and the two alien races, the vicious Greenskin Orcs and the mysterious Eldar. In their background lore and game setup, they are quite opposite in how they conduct warfare. The Orcs, for instance, are hands-on, mostly primarily close combat focused with big guns. Us orcs captured the resource point! The Eldar, more cunning, working in the shadows and the human space marines somewhere in between the two. Now during the beta version I only got around to play it as the space marines so I can't give a full description of what I think about the alien races unfortunately. The space marines has in the online game three special characters and units. The first one which are available are the death watch. Made out of serving space marines from several different chapters working together with the inquisition to kill the alien they are fairly useful units early on in the game. As a squad coming in with the drop pod, I mostly used them as shock troops dividing the enemy if they were attacking me. Now I don't have the best strategy of how to use them, so it's something you as a player have to figure out on your own. It's only how I'm describing my feelings about the whole experience. The next usable unit is Gabriel Angelos. He's a recurring character from the Blood Ravens chapter who has been there since the beginning. After the ending of the Dawn of War 2 Retribution expansion pack to the Dawn of War 2 game, he was left as a man in a broken body, but not with a broken soul. He was inferred into a mechanic Terminator suit, I believe at least, and made into the chapter master of the Blood Ravens. So Gabriel is a very beloved character for me personally, and I have followed him since 2004 when he appeared in the first game. He has a very distinct, powerful voice. He didn't appear again until Dawn of War 2, where he was played by another, lesser actor who didn't get that powerful aura of the character, which unfortunately saddened me. Luckily, the original voice actor returned in Retribution and to many extents gave a final goodbye to the character. That he was brought back in this game was, for me, met with mixed feelings. It's great to see his return, but it is another voice actor who is not as good as the original one and I have no idea what the game creators thought about making him into a freaking backflipping terminator. Surprise, In the novelization of the first game there was a segment of backflipping terminators which had the people within the hobby go furious about. Terminator suits have always been stiff walking tanks, not something you flip about like a dancing ballerina. So this new feature I do not approve of at all. It reminds me way too much of Warcraft, a game series I'm not a fan of either. So the last available character is Solaria, the head over a house of knights. This is a new addition to the Dawn of War game previously not seen. As seen in the trailer, these behemoths sure pack a punch 
and I love to see them in full action. They are more mobile than I, I first anticipated and not as stiff as I first thought. It has some serious firepower you do not want to mess with. I think this is a stronger addition to the game. Now we can get into the online gaming. I only got to try one type of multiplayer mode. You can play either as 2 on 2 or 3 on 3. Me personally prefer the latter of those two. I prefer to play 3 on 3 so you can have 2 on more on the offensive path as I'm a more of a defensive game style type of person. I work best at protecting what we managed to acquire than being an offensive type attacking and trying to acquire more. Usually when I rush into things I get overrun. I'm not sure how, but most of the time I get run over as like the enemy produces units faster and more stronger than me. So the game reminds me a lot of Dawn of War 2 in the setup, but it does have some base building so it's a middle ground between the first and the second games. So you rush against the enemy, capture the, the strategic points, gather energy to produce units and upgrades. During the first matches I played, there was a ratio of losing 60% of the time and winning 40% of the time. It could mean a lot of different things, either that it's an unbalanced game or that I'm simply not as good at it. I would say losing lost a lot of the fun in the game for me, but those few matches where I won, it, it sure felt great. It's a lot of competitive strategy game players out there, which unfortunately ruins a lot for the newbies like me. One thing that kept bugging me was in fact that it was slightly hard to orientate the game, particularly it was a very confusing map system where I think the older games succeeded way better. The art style of the game is very comic like, mixed with the state of the art graphics, for better or worse. I was a little afraid that the game would lose much of its gothic tones, but after seeing some of the campaign gameplay later on, as I talked and mentioned earlier, I am satisfied that this is not the case, I would think. So what do I think of the beta game? I found it to be very enjoyable, particularly for not spending a dime on it, but it had its small flaws. And since I haven't tried the full game, nor tried out all the factions, it would be unfair to grade the game almost. But from what I gather and for what I did try, I would give the beta game of Dawn of War 3 at least 7 out of 10 forks. And with that said, I want to conclude this game review. Thank you very much for watching this game review. Don't forget to rate and subscribe to my channel. Please give a thumbs up on my videos. And also leave comments on things I'm doing good so I keep on doing them. And leave negativity on things I'm doing bad so you improve or the content entirely. And I'm also on Facebook these days. Check it out down in the description. I try and update more regularly there than I do here on YouTube. Not by much, but a little to make a difference. And with that said, thank you very much for watching this game review. For the Emperor! Bye!